Hi, in today's video, I will be discussing with you how to answer a pathology examination viva. Okay, so as we all are aware that uh, describing specimens, the gross examination features is a very important part of the viva OC. So let us look at some specimens. Uh, I have included common specimens from general pathology and systemic pathology and we will see one by one how to describe them. Okay. The first specimen I have chosen is atrophic testis. So what is it? How does it look like? See this is the specimen of atrophic testis. This is a normal testis. In comparison you have a atrophic testis. So it is much smaller. Okay. So from the examiner point of view, if I am the examiner, I can ask you what is atrophy. So what is atrophy? So this is kept as general pathology. Atrophy is a decrease in size of the organ due to decrease in number of cells. Then I can ask you the causes of atrophy. They can be physiological atrophy <coughs> and pathological atrophy. Okay. The same specimen can be kept as a part of your male genital system. In that case, I will ask you about the causes of atrophic testis. All right. How do you describe the specimen? So, whenever you are trying to describe a gross specimen, you will go about first describing the organ. So, here we are saying it is a single pale brown specimen of testis measuring so and so. You give the measurements of the specimen and you say the size of the testis is reduced. And what is atrophy? Atrophy is decrease in the number of cells resulting in decrease in size of organ. And specific causes of atrophic testis are cryptorchidism, Kleinfelter syndrome, testicular regression syndrome, following vasectomy. The next specimen kept here is of a wet gangrene intestine. So again, it depends on which part of the uh, organ you want to describe. You want to describe it as a systemic pathology or as a general pathology. If I am going to describe the specimen as a general pathology, I will ask you as an examiner, list the differences between dry and wet gangrene. That is an exam question. So what will be the differences and what are the features here? The features here are it is a specimen of intestine, outer surface is dark brown congested, there is no line of demarcation and the prognosis of wet gangrene tends to be very bad. right? And examples are it can be seen in a wet gangrene of the diabetic foot can be seen. Secondly, it can be seen in the intestine. So how do you describe the specimen? Specimen of intestine measuring 15 cm in length, outer surface shows dark brown congestion, no line of demarcation, lumen of the bubble contains mucus and blood. Complications septicemia. Third specimen kept here is of a tumor of skin, malignant melanoma. How do you describe it? You will say that this is a specimen of skin. So you have to describe the skin. This looks elliptical or irregular. So you can say it is an irregular skin specimen having a pigmented nodular lesion. These are two different specimens by the way. And it is a pigmented nodular lesion. And on the cut surface, what are you finding? You are finding that there is, if you look at this specimen, there are satellite nodules, right? This is one specimen uh, nodule here. There is another nodule here, right? So there are nodules, satellite lesions present. And then the questions can be posed to you. Let's say if I am interested from general pathology point of view, Give me example of pigments I can ask you. So you say pigments are endogenous pigments, exogenous pigments and the endogenous pigments are melanin, lipofusion, etc. Exogenous pigment can be anthracotic pigment and uh, tattooing. So specimen of skin with a pigmented nodule, cut surface of tumor is blackish in color. The specimen shows multiple satellite nodules. Next specimen, this is very common. Every college will keep it. Specimen of appendix acute appendicitis. So how do you describe it? So this is a specimen of, I have for comparison I have kept an actual specimen. See what happens is the actual specimens which are mounted in the colleges, they sometimes tend to lose the uh, shine and the classical appearance. So for the comparison I have also kept a image of a fresh specimen. So this will help us in describing. So you have a specimen of inflamed appendix. Outer surface of the appendix is dark brown, congested and usually the serosa becomes dull when it is inflamed appendix and as you can see here in this fresh specimen, the specimen appears inflamed. So 
a specimen of edematous appendix, the external surface of which is covered by a layer of fibrinous spirulent exudate and patchy subserosal hemorrhage. A small amount of exudate is also seen on the surface of adjacent fatty tissue. Next, coming to again a very important specimen, especially in our Indian setup, specimen of tuberculous lymph node. What are the gross features? Gross features, it's a matted lymph node. Why do you say matted? There's one lymph node here, another here, third here, fourth here, fifth here. So this matted, the cut surface shows cheesy white areas, right? And the questions that can be posed to you are, all right, so do you have described the specimen? Fine. As an examiner, I would be interested in tuberculosis being the example of granulomatous inflammation. I can ask you, list the other causes of granulomatous inflammation. What will be the answer? You may say the answer is sarcoidosis, cat scratch disease, syphilis. So, okay, these are all other examples of granulomatous diseases. Or I can ask you in particular about TB. What is the GONS focus? I can ask you. Right? So there are multiple ways the viva can go. So this lymph nodes appear matted and cut surface shows cheesy yellow areas corresponding to caseation necrosis. Next specimen is of a infarct spleen. Okay. So this is a very important question. But classical question for this specimen, I think all the examiners will ask is why is what is the shape of the infarct? The shape of the infarct will be wedge shaped. And why is that? It is wedge shaped because the artery tends to branch out. And when it branches out, it is the end artery supplying the spleen. When it branches out and there is an infarct, the base tends to be wider than the apex. The next question I can ask you are classify infarcts. Infarcts can be based on the color red and white infarct. Based on the presence or absence of infection, they can be anemic infarcts, sorry, septic infarcts and bland infarcts. Right? And on the age of the lesion, fresh infarct, old infarcts. So, specimen consists of spleen with cut surface showing a wedge shaped yellow white areas of infarction, the base of which points towards the surface. The capsule over the infarct also shows yellow discoloration. Again, another favorite specimen of all the examiners. This is a specimen of dermoid cyst of ovary. So, what are the classical features you see here? You can find here a tooth here, right? They have solid protuberance which is called the Rokitansky protuberance. You have hair here, sebaceous material. The examiner will ask you, what is it? You say, this is a specimen of ovary showing different elements within the ovary, such as hair shaft, sebaceous glands, a solid protuberance, perhaps tooth. So in all likelihood, it's going to be a dermoid cyst of ovary. Next question examiner will ask you is, what is it an example of? You will reply, it's an example of a teratoma. What is a teratoma? Teratoma is a tumor derived from more than one germ cell layer. Many questions can be asked. Next question I'll ask you is, what is struma ovary? Struma ovary is a specialized form of teratoma having thyroid tissue. Okay. Next question will be, what is an immature teratoma? An immature teratoma is a teratoma having immature elements such as neural tissue and it tends to have a bad prognosis. This is another specimen of a teratoma with hair shafts. Next specimen is of a lipoma. Lipoma is usually kept as a neoplasm, example of a benign neoplasm. So you will reply, this is a specimen of a well circumscribed lesion having a yellow a buttery cut surface. And this is a circumscribed lesion. Diagnosis is lipoma. The examiner can ask you, is it a benign or a malignant lesion? You will say it's a benign lesion. The next obvious question will be, what are the differences between a benign tumor and a malignant tumor? So a benign tumor is well circumscribed and it does not infiltrate into the surrounding tissue. On microscopy, it usually tends to be well differentiated. Mitoses are not that many. A malignant tumor, on the other hand, is ill-circumscribed, infiltrative, on microscopy, you can have a lot of mitotic figures. It can go towards anaplasia. So, and the most important difference between a benign and a malignant tumor is benign tumors will never metastasize, whereas malignant tumors frequently metastasize. The next question I'll ask you is, can you name me uh, one 
malignant tumor which does not metastasize? The answer is basal cell carcinoma. So with this, I would have finished my first set of video on discussion of specimens of pathology. I will go to the next video discussing the other specimens. Thank you for your attention.